Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, All About BI. In this session, I'm going to tell you how to copy files from one container to another or folder uh, based on last modified date times. Okay, without hard coding anything. All right. So my expectation is this: I have a container called AZFS. In this container, I have a folder. I mean, uh, I have various files and folders with different modified dates. Okay. And I need to copy incrementally uh, on incremental basis. In the sense, if I have a last modified date in hand, I have to uh, pick up the files which were last modified after that particular date in hand. Okay. For example, I have a table called table ADF. In this table ADF, I am storing the last modified date time. It's like a watermark table. Okay. So here I see that the last modified date time in UTC format is uh, October. 11 2023 10 51 am okay so this is the last modified date in hand for me what i have to do is i have to pick up all the files uh, which are modified after this particular date time okay that is what i'm going to do how to do that in azure data factory that's what i'm going to tell before i take you through the design of the pipeline i'll tell you the flow okay so we need to first take the last modified date time from this particular table that that is step one get last modified date second is get the UTC time UTC now time which will tell you the current time until which you have to copy the files for example if I run my pipeline uh, today um, at 5 p.m. right so I have to capture this value in a variable so that I can uh, pick up my files until that on uh, that point in time okay so that I can update this value back to my UTC value at the end of my pipeline execution okay that is why we are capturing the current time and third uh, um, step is to copy files during copy operation we will be mentioning last modified date time after which we have to pick up the files finally we have to update the last modified date time in table okay so these are the steps that we are going to follow in the pipeline I'll show you how to do that in data factory now so taking you to the uh, pipeline design so these, these are the four steps that I mentioned okay so the first step is to look up the last modified UTC from the table second is to capture the current time uh, which is nothing but UTC now third option is to copy the files so here uh, now I'll probably show the execution of previous result I have okay I don't have previous result because I have uh, uh, not enabled these two so I'll run the pipeline now and show you how it executes okay but before that let us look at the properties so the lookup uh, activity this will be looking up last modified uh, value from the table okay so I just have one record in my table that um, captures the last modified date time I will keep on updating that value to pick up incremental files okay this is step one second is a simple set UTC now set variable activity so here I am assigning uh, UTC now to the last modified date variable of type string okay so in the copy activity I have a source okay I am mentioning azfs this is my container name there is no folder path because I don't want to uh, pick any particular folder but all the files and folder which meet the criteria that we define okay and star this is a wildcard um, option wherein we are not uh, restricting any particular file name or folder but all okay and then i am because i mentioned star here i will choose wildcard file path and one more thing that we need to know here is this is of type binary because in my uh, source container i have different kinds of files text file csv file of different schema okay and uh, i don't have to make my pipeline validate the schema during runtime that is why I, this is for just pure copying right copy the files from one folder to another right so i don't have to validate the schema so i make um, the source data set as well as sync data set as binary okay and here is where we need to make use of the timing okay so here in the start time which is in utc we have to pass the um, output that is brought by our lookup activity okay so activity uh, this is the lookup activity name it output dot first row of last modified this is the column name that we see in the table okay so this will be giving me the last modified date from my table all right so this is the start time 
uh, in from which I have to start picking my files and end time will be UTC now okay and um, since we have already captured the UTC now in a variable we have to make use of that variable because there will be minute difference between when set variable activity executes and when copy data activity executes okay some millisecond changes uh, difference will be there so what we have to do here is we have to choose the last modified uh, variable here okay so this is how we make the copy activity to pick up files which were last modified after this time but before this time okay and finally after the copy has succeeded we have to update the um, last modified date back to the utc now that we have captured in the variable okay so that is what i am doing here update table name set last modified equals to utc now so here also we have to make use of the variable because every activity runs on its own in time and there will be a minute difference in milliseconds between each activity's execution time so we shouldn't take it for granted that is why we have to make use of the variable which we have already um, used okay so now that we have uh, updated uh, you know, all the activities, I'll just uh, run my pipeline um, and show you how it works. Alright, the pipeline has executed now. So here, the last modified date that was in table was 11th October 2023. That has been brought by the lookup activity. And then set UTC now, uh, it will capture the current time. Okay, uh, today is... 10th December so that is being assigned to last modified variable and next to that copy after last modified this will get executed this will be picking up all the files that were modified after 11th October okay so in my source container if you see this is my source container almost all the files got modified after 10th after October okay so all these files have to come and whichever uh, files that are present inside the folder which were modified after 11th October they also have to be copied right so uh, this is the expected result let us look at the uh, statistics of the copy activity okay so files read uh, 40 and written were 40 so almost 40 files um, have met the criteria that we have given in between two day time okay so going to the um, container uh, i mean the target container and refreshing it right we have to see all the files uh, that were modified after 11th october okay so as i said all the files that were in my source container have present along with different folders in which um, there are files which have met the same criteria okay so after copying uh, such files what we have to do is we have to update the date back to the current date time okay so going to the table now to see whether the date has been updated from 11th october to the current date so see here this is the time when i executed the pipeline so this is what is captured in the uh, table so whenever i run my pipeline again my copy activity is going to bring files which were modified after this time okay so in order to test this let me upload some file right now for testing so i'll just upload some file here and now i have uploaded one json file or xml file right std error dot xml 440 pm okay now I will have to run my pipeline again to see that if it copies one file that we uploaded right now. Let the pipeline run. So, last modified date is this. Current UTC, we don't have any issues there. It will capture the current time and set it to the variable. Copy activity is where we have to concentrate. Okay, let us see. one file okay as we expected copy file copy activity is intelligent enough to identify this one file which we uploaded in uh, uh, azfs so we will go to azfn container to see the same file copy copy getting copied okay so this is how we um, design a pipeline to uh, copy files 
based on timestamp okay maybe you can call it incremental file copy so this is what i wanted to share in this video if you have any questions you can let me know thanks a lot for watching